So uh, welcome to the Home Renovation the YouTube channel dedicated to homeowners uh, doing job professional result. Today we are talking French door. So one of the most complicated doors that you can install in your home, of course, is the French door, which simply means two doors right beside each other with nothing in between them. Shouldn't be that difficult, eh? The secret here is in planning. Having your house framed properly, having the jams cut properly, and especially in a basement because your floor is never level. There's a lot of information to go through, so we're going to go step by step on this installation process to make sure that if you want to have a gorgeous French door, you can do it yourself and have an amazing look. We're even going to throw in a couple of ball latches at the top so that the darn thing stays shut. Okay, so building a French door, step by step, let's go through the tutorial, right? Basically, you go to this harbor store, you buy yourself a kit. And it is going to come with a jam for each side with the hinges already in there. And it's going to come with a jam top piece. It's your job to make sure that you frame the door properly so that this will fit. This one does not, so we will have to cut it down. <laughs> no big surprise. Uh, we took over this job from a homeowner who then sold this house and left this mess to somebody else. So this hole does not fit a French door. But that's fine, we're just going to cut it down on the jam and install. Now listen, if you're installing one of these and you have yet to buy a laser level, do yourself a favor and go out and buy one. If we're in a basement right now, so we don't have any confidence that this is plumb, level, square, or otherwise. So we're going to have to basically build this door, float it in the space, and then attach it all. But first we're going to cut this down so it fits. So the first thing you're going to do when you want to put in a door, especially in a basement, uh, although you should do this with the main floor too, just in case there's some settling, a lot of wood construction homes, floor joists take a little weight and then they do a little droop, you know. So this is a great way to start. Put in your laser line horizontally, measure from the floor to the line on each side and just find out if when you build this, it's going to be sitting nice and plumb. That is 29 inches, that is 28 and 7 eighths. Hmm. So, right now, both of our jams are the same height. If I install it, these doors are going to get installed crooked. And that is not a good finished look. So what we want to do is take this piece here that is shorter. We want to take the extra eighth of an inch off one side. Whoops. We're hinging out. This side is shorter, so we're going to take another eighth of an inch off the bottom so that we can just come and install our jam, pre-made, and stick it in the hole. And then all we have to do after that is just make sure that each side is plumb and square at the top. So, let's get this the right height first. Here we go. That's an eighth. So, there are three key measurements you're going to need here. One is you have to adjust from your laser line to the floor. We just did that. Now the laser line to the top is going to be exactly the same on both sides. Good. The next thing we've got to do is cut the piece that goes across. So, to make our life simple, we will simply measure the width of this. Look at that. 50 inches. We're going to cut this to 50 inches. And that's the next measurement we're going to need. And then after that, it's just a matter of figuring out where the jam assembly gets attached to that top jam, and then we can stick it in. So here we go. That's pretty snug, but that's fine. It's not going anywhere. I think I like it. So that's our header established. We have our sides established, but now we have to figure out, you know, how plumb are these walls? So we're going to set up our laser level and throw a line up each of these to see if this framing is made a little square or not. Okay. So when I throw my line up, I'm going to start right here off the wood. And I'm going to see that it opens up a little bit. Okay. So that's in, in the world of framing, that's actually pretty straight. It's not a big issue. Okay. We should just double check this side as well. Let's give or take an eighth quarter. That's actually pretty straight too. Okay. 
So all things being equal, let's assume that these are relatively plumb and our hole is 50 inch. That means it should be about 50 inch at the bottom as well. We'll just confirm that. Yeah, it's a little bit less. Okay. All right, so now it's time for some math, okay? So we have a 50 inch hole and we got to check our doors. Now, I've already measured in advance and double checked. These particular doors are completely square. They're solid wood. They do not have a built-in bevel, okay? Some doors come with a built-in bevel and make it really easy for opening and closing in tight spaces. These do not. So we have to take our 24 inches per door. We have to add an extra eighth of an inch just so that they can open and close properly without contacting each other in the middle. Plus you want another eighth on each side. That's a quarter. And we put all of that together plus the thickness of the jam material. That looks like a half inch to me. So, 48, 49, hmm. That is two eighths, three eighths. 49 and three eighths which leaves us five eighths left over. Wow. So when we install our jam, we're going to have just enough space in here to throw in the occasional shim, but not a whole heck of a lot more than that. So what I'm going to suggest is when we stand it up into position, we get as close to the edge as we can on one side. So what we're going to do is we're going to install that jam with just one eighth inside that corner. And then we're going to measure across our 49 and 3 eighths and then put the other jam in. And we're going to attach it using the brad nailer and just throw a few nails in at an angle. We're intentionally nailing it so these nails come back out the other side. So please do be careful of your hands. Now, our gap was 49 and 3 eighths from the outside. That include the jam. I'm going to give myself just a little bit of extra space there for good measure. And that measurement takes us to the outside of our jam material here. Ta-da! Now we stand it up. Ta-da! Now, those little brad nails are working awesome to help create some compression so it doesn't fall down. One of the benefits of having them there. Okay, so now we take the laser level again that we've got this wedged in. We know our gap is perfect up here. So we want to see, make sure that we can now plumb these two sides. We'll just use our laser level Bring it over to the wood, hit the bottom of the jam, and check to see. Yes, it's inside. We can actually shim from top down, making this perfect. So by starting tight to one side, and, and starting on that actually is uh, perfectly plumb that side, we have lots of space to shim and manipulate and make this door perfectly square. Makes my life real easy. Just gonna set that with a couple of brad nails. And now we're gonna get some shims. And we're going to shim behind every one of these hinge positions. That's a great way to do a shimming. If you shim outside of that, your wood can be bowed everywhere. And then your door is going to creak like you would not believe. Okay, so we got our shim pack here. Now, before we get started with the shimming, just a note. If you're framing your own door and you don't have a lot of experience with this, make sure you buy all your materials first before you frame. Know exactly which door you're going to buy and what the actual dimension is. Uh, understand you need that eighth of an inch between every jam and door and door to door as well. Don't forget to include that. Know how thick your jam material is going to be. And then realize that if you're using longer fasteners, you can allow yourself some extra space. Because building everything plumb is already hard enough. And if you're out and you're a little twisted, a square door frame isn't going to fit in the space that's left. So you can create a lot of work for yourself by trying to keep everything too perfect. Framing is not finishing work, okay? Leave your hole extra large and it's so much easier to work. Shimming 101. 
they come wedges, you always want to shim from both sides. And that keeps everything straight, nice and flush. So when you come from both sides and you put two shims together, it creates the same thickness on each side of the wood so it doesn't twist. If you shim both pieces from one side, you end up with a wedge and you will twist your door frame. Now, in the same respect, an advanced tip here, if your frame is twisted, you can use that technique to help straighten out your trim board. But we do not have a twisted frame. And so what we want to do is start off with just a little bit of shimming. And the way we ID, way we ID whether or not this is where I want it is with the laser level. So I'm going to set up my laser level on this side of the board. I'm going to have it hit this point right here. That is now my new fixed position. And you'll see that by putting shims in, I'm actually causing it to bow. All right? I'm nailing that right against the wood and it's still perfect. So, no need to worry about the shim here yet. For this hinge position, we are going to be happy with that. After we're all done, I'm going to throw some screws into these locations. I'm just using the brad nailer for now. Gives you a little more flexibility moving forward. When it comes to speed, if you can actually build the wall perfectly plumb, doesn't that make so much of a difference? Okay. All right, time for the other side. Now the same thing. We're gonna put that laser line right on that corner. Perfect. Let's get that position there. And we just wanna keep pulling these two shims till the laser shows up on that edge of the jam. Bam, there it is. Here, oh, right? And so when you use the fasteners, it's gonna compress. So make sure you pull it and then check with the compression. That's perfect. Now before you put fasteners in, make sure that it's flush to the wall. And that's only if your wall is level. <laughs> nice to make everything plumb as you go, but. There we go, okay, same process down here. We're gonna just go until our light shows up on our corner. Add a little pressure, we're still good, okay. Now at this point, because we're using a wood jam, you could check here and see how this is doing, okay. It's actually, it can be forced out a little bit, but we don't want to do that until after we get the other hinge position done. So let's do the bottom first. That is pretty darn close to perfect. I would like to see this part pulled just a little bit tighter. So we're going to throw one extra shim here. And this is where wood is not perfect and so if you want a perfect job, you've got to be able to manipulate it. Here we go. I like that a lot. And this is the point in the job. Almost everyone says, what about the top? You put in shims and nail that all up. Look at how much manipulation there is available here, okay? Resist the temptation. And I'll tell you why. When you put your casing on, you have an opportunity to get everything perfect. So when we're installing these doors, our job, now that we have it perfectly level and square and plumb, is to install the door hinges on those doors in exactly the same location on each side. Then they will meet in the middle. We're gonna just throw one nail in here for now. Once you're happy with your location, Throw a few extra screws in and try to put them where you know the doorstop is going to go so you don't have to fill this hole afterwards. Perfect. All right. Now we're ready to move forward. Woo! Now, so now what we want to do is we want to find out exactly where this hinge is, okay? Yeah, seven and three quarter inches. Now, we want to transfer that information onto this door. So seven and three quarters, right? Okay, problem with that, there's no gap. So, what you want to do is take off an eighth. And an eighth is all you need. Because remember, our door jams are exactly plumb, so everything will be square. <laughs> so we're gonna do it that way, all right? We're taking off an eighth, and that's our hinge mark. And we'll do that for each door, 
And we'll do one on this side as well. There we go. Alrighty. So traditionally when I'm doing this, I'll just take out a chisel and my knife and I'll cut and chisel this out. But I'm thinking to myself, you know, for the sake of the homeowner, I was in the door section and I was like, I'm going to buy one of these kits. Because I already have a hole saw kit for cutting a hole. But this particular kit looks like it comes with a rotary tool blade and some instructions and a couple of parts here for hinges. Let's just open this whole thing up. Try not to cut myself open again. And the packaging is crazy. They sure want you to make a horrible sound if you're going to try to steal this out of the store, don't they? <laughs> ah. Okay, just for the chisel. Oh, I was really hoping that this was going to be kind of like a little mini router that we could use. That maybe I was going to put in my rotor zip, but it doesn't look like that's the case. It's just for sticking this on and then you can mark out where the latch plate goes. All right, moving on. It's important when you're doing this to know uh, which door is going on which side and where the hinges location are. So this might be our mark, but my, my hinge is that edge. Okay, so it might be worth it to put this mark on both doors before you get going. Just so you don't get confused once you get it down. Or you'll end up cutting the same door twice. That's my measurement, but that's my hinge location. And that's where I want to cut this to, all right? Because remember, the hinge plate itself does not go right through the other side of the door. Maybe I should just take a hinge out real quick and show you that. This is our location. And if you open this hinge up like that, and you put it tight in against the door, you're going to end up causing too much rubbing. So you want your hinge set back a little bit, just like this, so that the side of this metal is flush with the front of the door. I am always partial to putting that mark on. Okay, and if you use the hinge as a template, it makes your life a lot easier. Oh, cheapers, creepers. This is the challenge we have here, Max. This is for a three and a half inch hinge. Okay, <laughs> with that little template, they got you trying to cut a three and a half inch hinge in here. Dear Lord, that's not gonna be helpful at all. We're using three inch hinges. The door jams come with a three inch, three inch mortise. So if you just trace this like this, you're gonna be more successful than that using that little kit. The other thing, this has got you teaching you to chisel this way. Well, that's just ridiculous. That's against the grain. So this is where the painful part of the process is, right? I have a knife, I have it marked, set the chisel in the mark. You have the flat edge and you have the beveled edge. Put the bevel inside so that the outside of your mark is cutting straight down. Give it a bit of a love tap. All right all around the perimeter. Now when you're cutting with the grain of the wood like this, it doesn't take any energy at all, so don't hit it too hard or you'll just rip a hole in your door. Now, I'm no woodworker, but generally speaking, wood is rather predictable. As long as you hold that beveled edge on the same angle that'll slide that chisel across, it'll cut relatively the same depth. And this is one of these situations where less is more. <laughs> Don't be in a hurry. Here's why you want to be careful. You have two different building materials. You've got the softwood lumber core, and you have a hard board, hard density fiber board on the face on both sides. It cuts through the hard board a lot slower than it does the wood. Okay, so if you start here and you get going 
and you're like, oh, that's a lot of effort. And then you come over here with that same strike, you'll bury the chisel right deep into the wood. All right, so you wanna just nice and gentle, under control, make sure you're not gonna have an accident. Okay, and if you have a really sharp chisel, you should be able to do this without the hammer. And then what you do is you put your hinge in there, just check to see if it's flush. As soon as it's flush, you're good and ready to go. I don't want to, I don't want you to be too hard on yourself when you're chiseling. If you buy hinges that are square in the corner, it's a lot easier. If you buy the ones that have the rounded edge so that it matches your jam, then you're gonna to have to do a little bit of touch up work after you're done chiseling. Don't let that bother you. That's very normal. You'd be surprised how many of these product kits are still coming from the States. This is a three inch hinge, and you'll see that this is not mortised to the same detail. <laughs> you gotta love it. All right. <laughs> uh, if you're having any trouble with it, don't be hard on yourself. It's easy to patch this stuff up afterwards with a little bit of dry dex or drywall 45 compound. The irony is, is I bought these hinges in the same store as I bought the jam. You'd think they would source out products that match each other, but they don't. They let this become your problem. Now it's time to mark the hinge locations on the other door. Okay, so let's get the pins in. We're just gonna lift this into position and get our hinge pin in place. Now, they may be anti-squeak and they're almost anti-installation. <laughs> there we go. I'm a little tight on the, the jam on top, so we only put one nail. get that out of our way. Now our door's hanging on the hinge on the top. You wanna just pull this over, get it to that same location as the one on the top, which is roughly one eighth of an inch inside, and make your marks. And now we take the door off and we have to chisel out those two hinge locations. That is the best technique that I've ever found over the years for getting perfect hinge locations. So we're going to use our knife here, and that is simply to mark our edge. You know, on this channel, there's not too many times that I talk about safety, but these chisels, uh, if a three-year-old holds this and just goes like this into your hand, it'll cut you to the bone. It doesn't take a lot of strength. So always make sure you're cutting away from yourself. And if you ever move your hand, take a deep breath, take a look at what you're doing, make sure you're not pointing towards your body, okay? And if you are, use two hands. With one you're pulling, and with the other one you're pushing away. That way, if you slip, it's just for an inch or two. Because this is no time to get bumped somebody's walking by or to just find a soft piece of wood and go slicing through it like a hot knife through butter. Start your chisel as close to the edge as you can. Little taps. Come back with the intention of cutting it to finish perfect and then you won't slip. This is one time where being conscious and aware of what you're doing is worth it. Every amount of attention you give it. Perfect, all right? Now, just for fun, I'm gonna show you something that might happen on your job site. Whoops, I took out way too much, all right? If that happens and you realize it, or if you don't realize it until you're hanging in the door, one of your tricks that you wanna do, take a few of these pieces and put them in your pouch until it's time to install your door. You can use them to pack behind the hinges to help square everything off. Just like last time, we'll set the one on top, put in our pin, and then we'll attach all the other hinges. 
we're going to just put the one screw in. That is sweet. All right. Now that actually pulled off a square. A little bit of wood left over there. It was pinching against it. Now when you're setting this hinge, we'll use a different hole. There we go. Now, because we've already drilled a hole in that middle hinge, and it's not where we want it, we're gonna take some of the fiber from the wood chip, we're gonna stick it in that hole, break it off, create a shim, and then we can put the screw in again. Beautiful. When I'm installing hinges like this, I always intentionally leave at least one screw out until the very end, when I know everything is perfect. In case I have to make modifications, I like to have that flexibility of having fresh wood to set a screw. Door number two, same thing. Very important, that arrow, know which side the hinges go. After doing that for the last half an hour, you'd be surprised how fast you'll be to come over here and do the, exactly the same thing, and you will hate yourself for it. Okay. Now, before we throw the rest of these screws in, Let's uh, have a look and see how this joins up at the top. See, you like to think you're done right now, but the reality is you might only be halfway through the installation. <laughs> All depends on how this works out. Wow, that line is freaking awesome. Whew. You can take that to the bank. <laughs> that was for Max. Okay, so our gap across the top is perfect, which means the gap on the bottom is perfect. If we close the door in the middle, flesh, that is really close. We're not going to get that much closer. I don't think it's worth the hassle to try to make that perfect. All right, now, you'll notice we had a good healthy gap in the middle. And when I'm adding myself an eighth of an inch and an eighth of an inch and an eighth of an inch, generally that's a lot. Like if you look over here, that's not, a, that's more of a sixteenth. And what I'm doing is I'm allowing myself space for down the road. When, when you're building in a house that has a four season climate, you don't know how it's going to function for four seasons until you've been through four seasons in that space. Right now we're in the fall, early winter. The heating system is running. Everything is nice and dry down here. But I don't know what it's going to be like in the summer. Are these clients, do they keep the air conditioning going nonstop? Are they big on keeping the air dry? Is there going to be a lot of swelling? Are things going to tighten up? we might find ourselves in a position coming back and packing out some of these hinges to create some extra space and using that gap in the middle at a later date. I don't know. The point is, it's nice to have the option. So now we're happy with our locations. We're gonna get the rest of these screws installed. Okay, so in regards to the hardware, I'm gonna install it right now, even though we haven't painted. I'll uh, take it off to paint later, but I wanna show you the tricks for installing this hardware. And I don't want to have to make Max come back and film after I'm done my painting. So let's just get on with it. So for the hardware, I'm going to show you this. We have two doors. And on each door, they're going to get a door handle. On one side, we're going to put in the latch. And on the other side, we'll put on the catch. In the top of the door jam, we're going to install these rollerball units here. Inside the top of the door, we're going to drill a hole and we're going to set this in compression wise. And it's just a ball. And when the door closes, it'll catch on this little, and it'll keep the door in position. So each door will be in, held in position with that assembly at the top. And in the middle, it'll be latched together to help keep it in position long term and work with all the hinges to keep it all from twisting up. Can't do much about the bottom of the door, but. Hopefully with all of that in place, it'll keep the door straight and square for a long time to come. Now, you want to check the instructions for these roller balls when you're at the store. Um, this one comes with a 15th, 16th requirement for a drill. So I had to buy a specific blade just for that. Uh, so now I have the bit, I have this. And you have the ability to set the, the depth. These balls are on springs. Now it's not easy, but if you take your knife closed and you push the top of that ball, you'll catch those, those two little pins, lines here. 
You see that focus? Mm -hmm. Okay, and it's like a massive slot screwdriver. Okay, and you can actually raise or lower where that ball is so that when it comes to the door, it's the perfect amount of resistance. You'll see it's on the spring. So with resistance, it'll push past the plate and then it'll sit back in the cradle again. Okay, we're going to just install it and then you can see better. Uh, I think I better get my ladder for that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the measurement of the thickness of this detail on the door, which is four and a half. We're going to go from the center line because it's important when you're installing hardware that things are aesthetically correct. So if you go to the middle midpoint, okay, the midpoint of this detail on the door, it's going to look good. So we measured off two and a quarter, measured to the middle, made a cross on both sides. Now it's time to drill. And this will be interesting because that's a pretty good size hole. It's almost the width of the door. <laughs> We have to be very careful here, which is why the speed bore bit is so awesome because you can push it right into the center of that hole. Make sure it's not wandering around before you get going. You can see I don't have a lot of room to play. So what I want to do is I want to grab the back of this chuck and push straight down with both hands. And you'll notice that if I'm only using one hand, I might push on an angle. But if I'm using both hands, and I got right in here nice and tight, then all my downward force is right through the shaft and it'll help keep me straight. Oof. And we gotta go that deep. Dear Lord. <laughs> now I can't really see as well anymore, but it's already in the hole. So <laughs> at least to protect my eyes from all this flying debris. I'm feeling pretty confident about that. Yeah. Let's measure this off just to see how we're doing. <laughs> yes, you can measure your finger as a device. <laughs> hey, we're good to go. Now, be careful because this device here has these little ridges here, and these collapse under compression when you force it down. And you want to make sure those ridges are going left and right to the, where all the meat on the door is. If you go to the front and back, it might have drilled too close and you'll cause the door to explode. So you don't want to do that wrong. And now we just take our hammer, a couple of love taps. Here we go. Installed. Same for the other side. Here we go. Push. <clears throat> a little bit of a drill. Yeah, I like that. Okay, off we go. Now we got to mark our spot for these things. And it's really not as hard as you might think. Done. Okay. <laughs> Ta-da. Okay. <laughs> now, let's put these on the, on the ball. That's comfortable on the ball. And it's right on the ridge. When you're looking at it, the light will shine and you'll see that ridge right there. Right? You can see it's darker. Get it on the ball. That's perfect. So what we're looking at is this. I'm going to drill another hole in this wood with the same drill bit. The 15 16 encompasses the diameter of this hole. So I'm just lining this up. These little gray dents are from the roller ball. I just marked the thing. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that edge right on there. Right? Perfect. And I'm going to just trace that. Feeling that that's nice. We also can check with the measuring tape after we eyeball it. You just got to mark this off and measure. I'm an just under an inch, inch and an eighth, inch and an eighth, nice, and that, ah, perfect. So that's the end, right? Now, what I'm doing is I'm basically marking the center line of the hole that's in that fixture as well. So I'm, I'm just marking vertical off where the screw holes are. So the screw holes are, that's my center line there.
good. The only thing left to do here is sharpen your pencil so that it becomes a, a point. Or if you have a number one pencil, that would be really handy. Okay, we're going to line up our beveled edge. We're going to mark out that hole. Okay. Because when you look at this plate, you will see there's, there's a depth to the metal. It's been stamped. And so if I just install it, even though this is drilled out, these two holes are going to hold it all off the ridge. And it's going to look stupid. So, we don't use that for that. We're going to just set that and just do a little bit of a dimple on it. There we go. Just make sure that these fixtures will actually fit. Okay, so now we got our plate in position, all of our holes are drilled. Oh, we want to get the right schmack dab in the middle. And once you start your screw hole, you want to use that technique where you reverse it and burn because a lot of times these wooden jams that are really thin split so easy. Wait till it starts to smoke. There we go. So now the plates are in and what I've done is I took my drill bit and I dimpled out a piece of wood. And I've got a set screw here now. And I threw that in so that when I adjust the door, the jam isn't slopping around everywhere. And I'm finding that that is a really pretty decent fit. To the point where I like to stiffen it up just a bit. So, now is the time for us to bring out the shims and shim above that screw, make it nice and stiff, and then drive the screw in. Get that out of our way. I've got a real tiny little space there. Now if I want, I can tighten that up. I just stuck this on the ball, pushed the ball down, and then did a half turn just to lift out the housing holding the spring-loaded ball. I like the fact that it requires a, a push. And once I put the door stop in where it has something to push up against, it'll function a lot nicer. But I like that. Good. Wah. Perfect. So the next step that we have to do before we can add the door stop on the trim is we want to core out our door for the locks. Now, I'm using a laser level. In this situation, I'm not interested in what's normal. I know 35 inches from an unfinished floor is normal for the center of a hole, but I have a 78 inch door over here. And the rest of the doors in this house down here are 78 inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to center my handle right off the existing door handles in the other part of the room so that visually everything lines up. I know the top is going to be a little bit taller, but it's a bigger door. That's fine. It's more grandiose, but I don't want the handles to be offline too. I think that would just look a little bit cheesy. So once I've got that horizontal line that looks pretty darn fine to me, I'm going to just pencil out that spot. Here we go. Now, that may not seem like much, but that just saved me a whole lot of measuring. This is four and a half. We're going to go to two and a quarter. And there's our hole. Okay. Okay, these latch plates actually are adjustable for a larger or a smaller hole. All right. And that's the two and a quarter hole. So we're going to be just fine with this. Now, I'm going to show you something here that's going to be really revolutionary. But before we do that, let's drill our hole. So we're going to take our little hardware kit here. And we're going to line it up so that my cross line is right in the middle. And I'm thinking I'm just right about there. Okay, now, if I wanted to, I could also take a little screw, like a set screw, lock that in position. All right? Now I'm able to drill all my holes. So this little hardware kit here costs about $20 in the hardware store. That's Canadian dollars, so it's a relatively good deal. So Max says to me, he goes, you got your other drill? I'm like, no. This is part of the life, all right? Life of the contractor. I got a honeydew list. I took my drill home and mounted my wife's uh, coat rack by the door. 
So now it looks like I'm using my slow mixer to drill a hole in the floor to hole in the door to show you guys how to do this. Thank God for the template. We're gonna see how this works. Okay, that's somewhat square. We'll give that a shot. Thank God this is brand new. I haven't even gotten to the pine yet. <laughs> uh, might be faster to drive home and get my drill. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Come on, baby. <sighs> when you're drilling a core like this, and this is obviously a solid piece of wood, Take a couple of breaks. Let your metal cool down. And you can even take a pencil, if you can find your pencil. Clean out the resin off the teeth here. You get a lot of sap and junk. Then it really kind of binds things up and clogs up and overheats. Here we go again. Oy, oy, oy. You'll notice I'm using a little bit of a wiggle motion. That's just to help keep the blade from binding. If I drill straight in, it really superheats fast. All right, I see the tip coming out the other side now. Right. I can't believe that actually worked. Here's the funny part. I gotta use that same damn drill to core this out too. Okay. <laughs> so for a cheat, we're gonna go with the 7 8 hole. Oh, instead of drilling that huge hole. Yeah, it's probably perfect. In your hardware pack, you're gonna come with this, right? And this is very standard, everybody sees these plates. And then again, you know, you have to put it in, trace it out, get the chisel, blah, blah, blah. Or, you see this gap here? You stick your knife in that gap and you give it a twist. On both sides. And it pops off and the other piece falls off from the bottom. Okay, your hardware kit comes with one of these. All right, you simply line it up. Push that on. Now, you want to install it so that this side is actually where it's striking and that forces it closed, right? That makes a little bit of sense. And this is just a hair too small. That'll work. Make sure that it's flush here. Take your hammer. That's a three eighths, sorry, three quarter bit. No, no, no. Seven eighths? Seven eighths. Seven eighths bit. Bam, no mortising necessary. That'll speed up the process for you dramatically. So with the door closed, just mark your center line. Pop it back open again. All right. We'll take a handle of assembly and we'll put the screws on the inside of the room. Always, and we will line up this part and line up that part. Like I said, I'm gonna have to take this off and actually patch this door. That blade just chewed that to garbage. That was really funny. <laughs> but the idea here is you want to get these set screws uh, in position and then start with fingers. Make sure you're not cross thread before you put a drill in anything like this. Most of the metal that comes in these hardware kits is actually pretty soft. Okay, to finish it off, pull it out and make sure that your shaft or your drill bit isn't touching your door handle. You don't want to mark it up. Just do a few rotations each side, back and forth. So 
so that you have lots of room to get good grab on the screw and not contact the handle. There we go, and as soon as it starts to slip, stop. You'll hear it, it'll pump, pump, pump. You don't wanna be continue screwing that, you're gonna rip apart the screw head, and you will not be able to adjust that ever again. Okay, now that door, that's happy, that's in its final resting place. We do wanna put this latch on the other side. So, so now we got the Renault our final resting place. You can see there's actually a mark. And so what we wanna do is we wanna line that up into the middle, okay? And mark the top and bottom, all right? Now, turn this around. And you want your holes right off the middle. You want this part of the latch, see that? That's where that sits. And that's comfortable. So if you put these holes center, check with your hardware manufacturer. It's good to do a rough first. Those holes aren't center, but the hole is. Okay, and that'll center the door on each other. Hold them flush. So what I'm looking for is, since the latch on the other door is centered, and this is standard inch and, inch and three-eighths, right? you're looking actually for the five-eighths mark here. Here, let me just scribe it in. It'll be easier to see. To be right in the middle of your, square, of your rectangle here. Okay, so that's where you want it. Remember, we, we marked the top and the bottom based on where the door was rubbing. We want to push this until that line is in the middle of this rectangle. And then we want to trace it out and then grab the chisel. This is the same process as the hinges. And you have to be real careful. You do not want to split this up. Once you have the first part, then it's just a matter of going back and trimming it up, right? I like to take that hardboard down to the right depth first. It doesn't have a grain, so it's easier to control. And once you have the depth set, it's a little easier to set the rest of the door. So we still want to drill a hole for the latch to stick into. Just trace out the rectangle. Now, for this, we're going to use the one inch bit, which is the same size as top to bottom. We're going to set it up right down the middle of our hole. And we're not going to cut very deep because we have a gap. So. There, that ought to work. Okay, there we are. You'll see these ridges here. These are nice because they'll actually bite right into that softwood when I add the screw. So what I like to do is just line this up. Give it a little bit of a love tap. Here we go. Now, my plan was to drill another hole in this door, and then I would bring the hose through from my compressor and be able to put on the door trim from the inside. I'm not all that keen about using that bit. I'm just a little afraid that something bad is going to happen and it's going to come flying out of my hands. So now that we know that that assembly works, what we're going to do is just take this door handle off and I'm going to demonstrate real quick how to install the door stop on the inside. And that's pretty much the last step to installing the French door. And this is the secret for installing trim on the inside of a room. All right, so our doors are both sitting in the roller ball location. All right, what we wanna do is make that tight. So we wanna push it and then just take a little bit, just relax a little bit and fire those nails straight up, okay? There we go. The secret to the side door is you don't want it pushed right up against the door. And the reason being, the opening and closing, there's a certain amount of swing. So you wanna leave a sixteenth of a gap. Okay. Because it's wood, it's not gonna be straight. So just slowly push it all into position or pull it away from the door as needed. You see here, yeah. this is a nice gap. That's too tight, so pull the bottom off. Push the gun on and then move your hand away. Set the gap, make sure you're not 
shooting into hinges or screws. And now we'll go to the other side and we'll give that door a little bit of a shove to close it and see how well it performs. Perfect. Ooh, I love it. Let's do that again. Oh yeah. Oh, that just sounds so solid. You know it's a good install when the door doesn't rattle. <laughs> okay, the last thing you'll need to know about your glass door is that it comes with this plastic cover. Now, that's not the plastic, that's just the paint. There's a lot of paint on this glass. My God. But the idea here is you paint your door while the plastic is in place and it, it, it encompasses the entire glass panel before it's input in the door. Take your knife and cut a very thin piece of plastic up against the glass. <laughs> and then simply peel the plastic back with, there you go. And that's what your finished door looks like. Yeah. So this is a really nice privacy glass that lets all of the light coming in just so that you can be in your own little room but still be a part of the space. Very nice look. Okay, now I got to clean up this mess. Wow, there we go. We have ourselves some French doors installed. Now listen, the, uh, the only cost difference with doing this versus a traditional wall is you have to buy a second door, second handle, a second set of hinges, two roller balls. It's, it's a little bit more, right? It's about another about another $150. But I think it's a great look. And it's so much easier for getting office furniture in and out of an office. You can buy a big desk and you can have big filing cabinets and dollies and all that sort of thing. So it does have a benefit. It's also really nice if you have a basement or a room that you want to open up really nice and wide to allow lots of traffic to flow through. Great for living rooms and, and, and dens off of the main part of the house. So if you want to get one of these doors installed, that's all you got to do. Frame it to the right size. All of those tricks and tips that I've got for you are in this video. If you like this, then please give us a thumbs up. We'd love to get that interaction help for you. YouTube loves to hear what you have to say about us. See you next time. Click the video to see how this project turned out.